The story of well, the separatists, the Pilgrim Fathers, really starts back in the reign of Henry VIII because we were a Catholic country until Henry's reign and until his famous divorce from Catherine of Aragon. And during that time, um, when Henry was trying to get to divorce legally, it, he'd sent um, um, clergy, Cranmer, over to uh, Europe to talk to the continental Protestants to see if there was any leeway for him to get a divorce legally, particularly concerning the rules in the, the book of Leviticus where it clearly states a man shouldn't take his dead brother's wife, which of course is what Henry had done. During this time, these continental Protestants would have been regarded as... as close to heretics, as you could imagine, but Henry was desperate. And at the same time, there were many people in Henry's court who were mercers, who had connections with the continent through trade, who had come in contact with continental Protestants and, more importantly, English translations of the Bible and was seen for themselves through God's word that the church in England was nothing like the church that Jesus had incorporated into the Bible. So when you can read these things for yourself, you start to question the church. And when you have continental Protestants saying the same thing, you can see that there, there is this flow in England of opposition to the church as it was the Catholic Church. Henry couldn't get his divorce. The word came back from the continental Protestants that there wasn't a legal ground for the divorce. Henry divorced Catherine anyway, and that's when we broke with Rome. But England didn't become a Protestant country, as most people assume. All we were were a Catholic country, but instead of having the Pope as the head of the church, Henry was the head of the church, and Henry still regarded continental Protestants as heretics. During Henry's reign, there was some changes. We um, had Archbishop Cramner working on the Book of Common Prayer, and the biggest change at this time is that the Bible was produced in England in English for the first time, and services in English. And that was as far as the reform of the church went. Henry was a, a, a sly one. Um, one never knew whether he was going to go back to being Catholic or not. And even on his deathbed, it was uncertain whether Henry would ask for a Catholic last rites. And that would have been, that would have been terrible for anybody who'd come out as a Protestant, if at the last... He deserted that and, and, and died as a Catholic. His son takes over, Edward. The country becomes even more Protestant. Reforms are carried out in the church, much to the delight of many of those who wanted us to be like the continental Protestants and who had their English copies of the Bible and wanted a Bible-based church. And if Edward had lived with the reforms that had been carried out, then all of the religious strife that came after, leading right the way through the Elizabethan age, into James's reign and into the Civil War, would probably have been averted. Because during Edward's reign, the church was reformed. And in some instances, the altar rails had been taken down and the altar placed in the middle of the church so everybody could have free access to take board together. This was revolutionary. This was how it was in the Bible. This is a church that Christ would have recognised. But Edward didn't live. And unfortunately, the next in line to succession was Catholic Queen Mary. And the country was spun about into a Catholic realm once more. And those who were Protestants had a very stark choice. You either conformed yourself to the Catholic Church, attended the compulsory masses and everything that went with it, or you stood your ground and faced execution, or you had to flee the country for your life. 
These were stark times indeed. And in the reign of Mary, we, we have executions, many executions, burnings of people considered heretics because they will not turn away from this new Protestant faith that they've embraced. So you can imagine the hardship of those who have escaped the country, who have known many friends executed in awful ways for this Protestant faith. Then, at the end of Mary's reign, she dies after five years, coming back to an England where Elizabeth has settled the church back to almost how it was under her father, King Henry, there would have been deep, deep disappointment. 